Hi guys, Squad here, and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. This one, we are in Gibraltar, in the Airbus A320neo, and we're going to be taking off out of Gibraltar on 09. It's a quite a nice day, actually. We're on live weather, live time, so everything's dynamic. And we are going east. We're going to go to Mallorca, one of my uh, favorite destinations. Uh, LEPA, Palma de Mallorca Airport. Should be a great flight. So what we'll do is we'll first have a look at the actual briefing and the route, and then we'll jump inside, uh, fire up the APU. Well, actually, probably get the ground power, then uh, program in the flight plan, then fire up the APU, and then do a push back and start and perform the flight. Should be good. Let's get going. So on the left, we have the flight plan, which I've generated using uh, Simbrief, the website, and on the right, we've got Navigraph charts. So we'll quickly go through this. I won't, I won't uh, labor the details, but let me start off by showing you the actual route today. So Gibraltar is LXGB, and there is no published instrument departure for Gibraltar. So we'll basically be taking off 09 and climbing straight out to our um, cruise altitude of flight level 340 uh, before descending down towards Mallorca. The actual route is here. Um, it is direct to Pemos, then we'll be going direct to Rixer, direct to Alicante, then direct to Rookset, and then we'll be doing the Rookset to Mike uh, approach down towards the um, ILS 406 left. We won't actually fly the ILS uh, automated because there are still some issues with the aircraft, but we'll factor ourselves in and uh, fly it in manually using the ILS uh, guidance system. So here we are. This is where we were at uh, apron A, and we'll be taking off out of 09 straight out. Uh, we'll then be coming down. Let me just make that a bit thinner there. If I move down to the vertical profile on the left, this will help to make more sense. So our cruise altitude is 340. When we get to Alicante, according to same brief, we'll then be descending down to what looks like about flight level 140 at Rookset. That fits in with Rutsit's restrictions of being above flight level 10. Uh, so that's fine. Then our actual top of descent is sometime just after Lampa, which is about here, something like that. And then we'll be descending down towards uh, Rookset. The actual end point for this, um, for this uh, star is Mallorca. And what's supposed to happen at Mallorca is uh, you presumably get vectored in or fly some kind of arc. If you actually look at ILS 06 left, it's meant to be an arc from Mallorca. So what we'll probably do is uh, just before we get uh, somewhat, somewhere in between um, Rookset and um, uh, somewhere between Rookset and Mallorca, I'm getting myself mixed up here. <laughs> somewhere between Rookset and Mallorca, we will turn left and just vector ourselves in on the ILS here. This is an 8 DME from MJV. Uh, the actual approach plate looking at this is 11 DME from JOA. So JOA is just about at the back of the airfield there. And we should be at an altitude of about 1,900 feet as we vector ourselves in um, at about 9 or 10 DME. And we should capture the glide path down into 06 left. So that's the basic plan. Like I say, I won't go too much over the details. I want to just focus on the flights and that kind of thing. So let's jump back in the aircraft and see if we can get it set up. So here we are back at Gibraltar, uh, and by the way, when I kept saying Rooksets, I meant Ibivu. Ibivu was the uh, the last waypoint before Mallorca, not Rookset. Rookset was down at the beginning. I was getting a bit mixed up there. Let's have a quick look at um, let's have a quick look at Gibraltar. Um, I may have already shown you this. I can't remember, but we'll quickly look around because it is one of the handcrafted airports, and it really is quite splendid indeed. Considering we get this completely for free, it is it is a taster for what we might get, you know, once we start getting the uh, the handcrafted airports ported over from the the people like Orbex and Fly Tampa and UK two thousand. Um, yeah, it, the future's bright, that's for sure. So let's jump back into the aircraft, and uh, we will get the batteries on. Not sure if we'll be able to um, contact ground to get the power truck in. Let's have a quick look and see if it's available. Tune into Gibraltar ground, ground services. Can we have a power supply? Yes, we can. 
Okay, cool. So he's about to um, come and plug in. That'll give us some ground power. That'll be nice. It means we don't have to be in a rush anymore before we flatten the batteries. It does, in fact, allow you to just connect ground power anyway, even without that truck. So whether they'll change that in the future or not, I don't know. So there we go. We'll turn on the external power. And uh, that'll uh, power things up nicely. We could also, I suppose, bring in the air stairs. See what that looks like. Uh, can you connect the ramp connection, please? The ramp is on its way. There you go. So he's opened the door already. It's perhaps a little unsafe. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, let's not worry too much about that. Oh, I think it's warning about the door being open. Right, so let's get down to business here. Uh, let's init this. Um, let's see, where are we going to be? We are going from uh, LXGB. We're going to go to LE, LEPA. So punch that into two from. There we go. It says non. It's fine. Then go to the flight pan page. Click on LXGB. Our departure will be direct out of. 09, so we'll insert that. So then we've got uh, LXGB, climb out, and then a D cell. So what we need to do now is punch in LXGB and we'll go to Airways. And our first waypoint is PIMOS. There aren't any Airways in the current preview build, so we have to do everything direct. So the next one is Rixa. And then after Rixa, we've got Alicante. And it says, which Alicante do you want? Let me quickly look at the flight plan. It says Alicante is approximately north 3816, west 0034. So it's got to be the top one. It's going to be this one here. And then after Alicante, we've then got Rookset, which is our final fix before we begin the approach. So we'll insert that. So LXGB, Himos, Rookset, Alicante, Rookset, and then D cell on our approach down. But what we want to do is go to arrival, and we want the ILS 46 left. Uh, it says there's no star, but we can get the rook set to Mike. Should be on here. Rook set to Mike. Are you on here? Is it a three Mike? It's quite a few. Rook set to Mike. There we go. Rock set to Mike, insert that, and then we'll have a quick scroll through. Okay. So now, upon here, if we go into plan mode, and we should, in theory, be able to see the plan. I can perhaps pitch my camera down as we scroll through that. Rixor is there. I'll tell you what, this is one of those things that's a lot easier in real life. Yeah, so there you go. There you go. So Alicante, Rookset, Lampa down, and this is more or less the arc that we was expecting. So we'll turn plan mode off. That looks good. Let's have a look at the actual... Um, Altitudes that it's put in here. Um, so let's see, we've got Rookset, six thousand or below at Lampa, five thousand or below that. Um, that's wrong. It's actually wrong. The problem is you can't actually change this because if we, if I remember off the um, the chart itself. On the approach at Lampa, we had to be above 6,000. So this is a 
pretty certain this should be a 6000A, but you can't change it, I don't believe. No, because when you click on it, it just goes into here. So... I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Um, we'll just have to monitor it. I'll probably manually descend anyway, and we'll just keep our eye on it and try and stay within the restrictions. Uh, so that's the um, flight plan programmed in. Let's set everything else up. So performance data. Uh, transition altitude is 15,000. I'm not going to derate the engine. It's about 30 Celsius outside. So we're going to punch that in as flex, but I'm going to toga it anyway. I won't be doing the uh, a flex thrust. We're going to put in flaps of one and then it should calculate our rotate speed is one, two, three at flaps one. Uh, next phase is climb. We don't need to worry about that stuff for now. Uh, so that should do is if we quickly look at the rad nav page, you can see it's already punched in ILS six left one one zero decimal nine, which is correct. Um, we could in theory punch in the JOA if I what's it called some point Joan, which is one one seven decimal seven. So we can put that in. Uh, so put that into VOR two. See if we can pick that up. Uh, the course inbound is going to be. 058 degrees if it let us push that in. Yes, it will. Actually, no. Sorry, that's for VOR1. Uh, it's already punched in the course 058. That's actually correct. <laughs> nice. So, I think we're set up here. I think now we just need to get the aircraft ready for uh, takeoff, and then we can push back. Okay, I forgot to mention the fuel. Uh, fuel is 7,600 tons. 7.6 tons, sorry. 7,600 kilos. Uh, which should be enough. I've allowed a little bit more because uh, I'm not entirely sure how accurate the fuel burn is on this preview release. Uh, Barrow's been set. I'll put the flight directors on. Uh, I've set the altitude to 3,400, 34,000, sorry, which will be flight level 340 when we get up there. So what we'll do now is we will fire up the APU. Let that get going and put the strobe onto auto. I do notice one thing. It's automatically retracted the air stairs and closed the door. Which is a bit of an interesting one. But what we'll do is we'll get the APU fired up and then we'll disconnect the ground power. Uh, in terms of pushback, we're going to have to manually get him to push back. Probably straight and then push just to the left. And we'll line up there and we'll taxi on down. There's actually a turnaround point right at the bottom. Which is going to be quite cool. Okay. Available. Let's put the APU bleeds on. Disconnect the ground power. And we shall tell the pushback truck to disappear. Uh, so anyway, we've got auto brake on maximum. There's not a lot we can set up at the moment. Um, even in terms of this stuff, there's only the fuel and the engine page that we can really flick between. Uh, we could set up other things, but we'll basically get the engine going. A lot of this is, is still a bit in up. Uh, so we'll whack the beacon lights on because we're about to move. And we'll go outside and see if we can actually get a pushback. Ground quest push back. While he's doing that, we will disconnect the parking brake and we'll begin engine start. takes his sweet time hooking up. All the trucks do, actually. All the vehicles tend to move around very, very slowly. There we go. These engines take a little while to get going, so it's definitely best to just start them early. Although doing this does mean you're not actually monitoring the engine. Okay, it's to the left. No, the other left. How, how is that? Okay, whatever. 
push that straight. It's almost like I'm telling him to steer to the right. It's weird because my nose is going left. <laughs> Honestly, I can't wait for somebody to um, bring an add-on for this to replace the pushback with something a lot better. Give it a little jiggle. Okay, that should be pretty good for us. We'll just push back a bit further and then we can basically taxi straight on. Okay, I reckon that'll do it. Let's put the parking brake back on. tells me we don't have fully running engines okay so let's try that again Lead on. Not entirely sure what happened though. Do you want to know what ha really, really helps when you're trying to start engines? Fuel pumps. Fuel pumps are great. If you actually give an engine fuel, it will actually start. That one threw me. I was like, what have I done wrong? I realized I forgot to put all the pumps on before I pushed back too busy thinking about other things so now the engines are actually starting i read somewhere that the neo you're supposed to start engine one before engine two which is the opposite to what you normally do so i've gone with that for now start up engine one instead and now we'll start engine two there goes the little dolphin whale noises of the airbus two hydraulic systems pressurizing anyway we should be good to go in a second yeah it looks like it's going to be some really nice flying lovely weather today this runway i think is about 1500 meters long so it's not huge um but we should be fine we should be rotating before uh well before here we're not actually heavy on fuel that's the other thing Probably about 30% on fuel. These engines are pretty powerful, especially in toga mode. Alrighty then, that's better. So we'll let the engines just fire up. And we'll carry on and put our taxi lights on because we're about to go taxiing. Stroke and stone auto. We turn on lights we don't really need. Looks like we've got two stable engines. We can't check our controls yet, but that's good. So we'll turn that back to normal. And we shall turn off the APU bleed. And turn off the APU itself. Okay, we'll arm the auto throttle. Okay, all the approach is looking clear. Slightly on the external camera, though. Okay. That's a bit nicer. I said before the drone camera is really nice, but we 
you can't actually control the camera in this view, so I just like hopping to it just to get a nice view, then jumping back again. Okay, we're in 27 foot elevation, that's all good. Into arc mode. So basically we're gonna more or less take off and then go to autopilot fairly quickly and then it and then pull back into um, the climb detent which is uh, two notches back. So it goes climb, then flex, then toga. We're going to go full toga and then pull back to climb. That was the one thing I didn't do on my um, Paris to Cardiff video. Was I forgot to pull back into climb because it was a bit rusty on the old Airbus. But hopefully we won't have any of those shenanigans today. Right, the actual turnaround is indicated here. You sort of swing out and turn around, do you see it? But, you know, scope exists to get your nose off the edge there and uh, have a really bad, really bad day. Try explaining that to insurance company. Straightened off. Okay. I reckon that'll do us. Right, let's check everything now. So we want uh, flaps. Flaps in position one. Uh, speed brake is armed. Parking brake is off. Engines are all in the normal position. Engine T's and P's all look good. Auto brake is set to max. Lights. Strobe. Actually, I think the strobe on auto should automatically come. It detects the takeoff on the Airbus and then goes on automatically, I believe, and then when you land, it turns off again. I believe that's how it's supposed to work. Okay, all the overhead looks clear. So, fly runway heading, climb, turn out. After toga, go to climb approach, uh, climb thrust, autopilot, and it should then go on its own right we're in nav mode SRS that the non to Togo when we put our foot down don't need anything else really we don't need to have um, terrain on well let's get the engines powered up a little bit and there's Togo enunciated SRS and nav mode auto thrust blue 30 was now rotate. Let's rotate. Up you come. Nose is up. Gear is up. Climb thrust. So pilot is in. Yep, climb thrust confirmed. Quick look back. That is a wonderful departure. Look at that. Okay, let's bring the um, flaps up now. Pitching down. Over speed. Over speed. Over speed. No, you're not. You're not over speeding. Your flaps are retracted, dude. Okay. It pitched down and over sped a little bit, but it's fine. 
But yeah, when you're here, look at that. When you're here, that runway looks like the size of the football pitch. And you think to yourself, how on earth are we going to land on that? Looks absolutely lovely. Anyway, let's keep our uh, attention on what's going on here. So at the moment, it's probably following some constraints. Speed restrictions that are going on. It's okay. It's following the flight plan. It's doing what it should be doing. Lights can stay on for now. It's all good. So yeah, there you go. I'm thinking by Pimos. I don't know why it's got a... Uh, that's a top of descent symbol, I think. I don't know why it's showing that. Once we get past Pimos, it should start to climb. If it doesn't, I'll put it into managed climb mode and it'll uh, get some altitude. But it should be climbing already. Absolutely fantastic. I, lo I love taking off and landing in Gibraltar. It's just that rock. <laughs> it's the rock that makes it. Okay, let's um, put it into... Yeah, I, th I know what it was. It was because I know I'm shaking 5,000 here. That's what it was. Because I didn't pull it into managed. My bad. I've been flying so many different aircraft and they all behave in different ways. But yeah, that's what it was. It was an unshaken 5,000 here. So it was holding at 5,000 because that's what I told it to do. So I just needed to pull on that and it was all good. It was punching up through the clouds. Which also looks spectacular with the bottom end of Spain in the distance there and the med below us. What a lovely day for this. That's in 9,000. So if you press down, it'll set standard pressure, which we'll do now. So on standard pressure. Track all the landing lights. Strobes and auto. Everything else looks good. And that's it. We've done what we need to do for now. Airbuses generally fly, fly a lot smoother than this. I need to do some adjustments on this. But it's still pretty fun. Anyway, I shall leave you with some music and scenes from the flights, and we shall pick it up. Nobody said. Welcome back guys, we are uh, on our descent now, as you can see here, currently flight level 150, 
out of Ruxert, descending down towards Lampa, trying to get down to Lampa at uh, flight level 70. Although we'll switch to low compression when we get down there, um, which I have punched in, if I can get the right camera view, that one. I've actually punched into um, the approach, the low compression 1013, temperature 34 Celsius. The wind coming in 07013 knots, transition altitude, it's given us a V approach speed of 142. When we're in full landing config, that's flaps three. Our decision height is 274, but I don't think we'll have any visibility problems today. So, yeah, it's just a matter of monitoring the approach now. Keeping things within the restrictions um, of the star and what it told us we our minimum altitudes were. Uh, but you can see the island on the left out there. So, yeah, we're picking up a little bit of time. We're going to end up doing a lot of manual stuff the avionics are still not very polished at the moment but uh it should be good we'll, we'll get in somehow <laughs> see you in a bit okay landing lights have come on we're on local pressure so far so good we're down at 7,000 feet which is where we want to be for lampa by IB, ibivu we should be about 5,000 feet i believe so we're just going to be leveling off shortly there are speed restrictions in place here, so it should honour those when we get to Lampa. should be uh, down to 230, but at that point, when we get to Lampa, I will probably, um, not Lampa, when we get to Ibivu, I will probably go manual here and just uh, vector us in. Because I'm not so sure what it's going to do about this. Looks like it's gone for a different approach, actually. It's gone in, um, that's interesting. It's actually gone in via ADX. In that case, I might let it follow around to ADX and then manually vector us in. Might be a little bit easier to do that. But yeah, a cracking view. I mean, if you just look down, the, the detail on the scenery is just fantastic. Look at this. Do you like Mallorca? We're going to have one of the best approaches in. I've actually, I've actually landed on the approach we're about to do in real life. Only once. Every time I've been to Mallorca, we've always come in on the reciprocal runway, which brings you over the land. But once I managed to land in um, from over the sea, which only happens when there's like an easterly wind. Whereas mostly it's not that way. So I didn't know at the time, but I was kind of lucky. Seven thousand feet so far is good. So Ibivu, we want to be down to five thousand. It does bug me though. At the moment, in the preview build, you can't set. Um, oh, you can set Hectopass. I do beg your pardon. In this aircraft, you can set hectopascals, but um, in some of the other ones, they're locked into inches of mercury. Well, that's good. Also, in this aircraft, all the fuel's in kilograms, which is correct, but in some of the other ones, it's locked into pounds. Right, it's just descended out over the sea. We should start our left turn. We'll pick it up shortly in uh, Ibivu. Welcome back, guys. Uh, I think uh, we went over I Ibivu and things got a little bit crazy. It just it literally threw in the towel. <laughs> we literally got to Ibivu and it just kept flying straight. It just it didn't follow any of this secondary plan. So uh, so be it. We'll just go manual completely now. Um, all the lights are on. Aren't they? Yes, they are. Everything should be set up. We'll uh, we'll intercept. We'll just vector ourselves in. It's absolutely fine. I kind of expected something like this would happen. I need to get myself descended. Come on, engage vertical speed. Okay, we'll do it that way then. 
Okay, so Mallorca, we can actually see the runway flashing approach lights. Uh, to the right there, just off the right wing. So, we could follow this vector all the way around, or we could just basically turn and intercept this way. You know, if ATC could just vector us straight in, that'd be nice. So things, I think that's what we'll do. What we're looking to do is get ourselves established on the uh, on the ILS. PLM's showing up down here, as you can see. That was the um, Palmer what we're looking for. So it's locked in on that. Right, it's auto throttle, blah blah blah. By the way, the expedite button here does not de-click currently. You can't touch it. So we'll start turning in now. We're just over, what, 15 nautical away. Yeah, so I think the approach plate is basically taking you that way and then bringing you in on a left, left uh, base. Okay, let's get the speed down. looking to um, capture the glide slope on the ILS now. Although I'm not going to arm the approach itself. Because crazy things happen sometimes when you do that. There's the slope coming in, see it? The lateral anyway. Okay, right, let's get some gear down. Okay, looks like I've got some distance to run. Looks like it was a bit early on that, but we're 15 nautical away, it's fine. So the lateral ILS is there, so we'll try and get a lock on that. The vertical one is still way above us currently. But if I was to press the approach now, I'll press it and we'll see what happens. It will probably just kick off and start doing weird things. No, it's actually behaving. It's actually looking for. Looks like it's looking. Oh, it's looking to capture the the horizontal, which is what it should be doing. And then it'll capture the vertical. Uh, let me quick look at the plate. Should be nine DME from Palmer. I mean, it's twelve point nine. So it should it should come down to about here when that's on nine DME, if we've got this correct. Otherwise looking good. Once it does capture here, I'll uh, disconnect and we'll fly it manually. Let's quickly have a look at... Oof. Now that is some very nice scenery. Very, very nice scenery. I really wish this thing had a replay and then I could fly and approach in and then come back outside and just do it again and, and look at this. Because... What the heck is that? Is that an island? 
<laughs> Looks like a little, like, water sink or something. 10.3. That should come down soon. I think the uh, well, satellite landing speed of about 145. We've actually got a quite a strong right crosswind coming in. It does look like it's trying to compensate for the crosswind, but it's not really staying on the horizontal localizer. DME 5.1 at 1700 it should capture so that really should be coming down shortly ok we'll start backing off and get ready for the landing now Slope's slips coming down. There it is, it's coming in, see it? Okay, so we'll have low auto brakes. Spoilers are armed, we're in full flap configuration. All the lights are on. Everything looks good. It's following the glide slope. It's not following the localizer very well, but it is actually following the... I think what it's doing is it's not taking into account the wind properly. That's why it's getting blown off course. But it's actually following the glide slope nicely, so what I'll do, I'll disconnect the autopilot. And we'll take it in manually. So the yeah, first thing I'm going to do is compensate for the wind. Keep the nose up. I'm just trying to follow those diamonds now. So you guys enjoy the view. <laughs> it's a lovely approach though, this. Especially from even a passenger perspective, it's lovely. Decision height today. Super clear visibility. Perfect day to land. Arm at the airport is not bad in the sim. It's pretty decent. Ah, oh, there's something on the right way. Taking off, I think. Yep, looks like something just took off. Versus. Okay, welcome to Mallorca. Let's see if we can get some taxi to the gate. Here a second clean up. Okay, uh, taxi light is on. 
Turn off those lights there. Strobes and auto, that's fine. Let's clean up the flaps. Turn off the flight director. If we had any radar, we'd turn that off. Contact Palmer Ground. And taxi to gate, please. Do you like that feature? The APU. Try and get ahead of the game. But yeah, as you can see outside, it's not bad for a default airport, is it? It's pretty good. Gate 5, just down here. Nice. Hope you enjoyed the flight. As ever, it got a little bit interesting towards the end. The um, the flight plan itself, when you punch it in, it's the MCDU. You can't edit it very much at the moment, so you can't override settings and make it do what you want it to do. And then the avionics as well. You you never know quite what it's going to do next. <laughs> but you know, we got here. Wow, not even going to go to Jetway. Blimey. Cheaping out on us, guys. I don't even have a marshal What kind of surface is this? Feels like the friction on the wheels is a bit too high at the moment on the, on the planes. It's a little bit like, instead of being on tarmac, it feels a little bit like you're on treacle or something. I think that'll do us. Parking brakes are set. Tax lights coming off. APU power is available. Beacon light can come off. Strobe light off. Engine disconnect. Please continue. I really wish you wouldn't do that. Um, let's see. Ground services, jetway connection. Let's see if we can get at least that at least. It's got to be connected, it says. Win. I don't know where it's going to come from. The other thing is I don't have the option to um, deboard. Like, there's no option to get the baggage handler in. Stuff like that. But anyway, it's opened the door. I don't know where the... I don't know where the guy's with the stairs. Maybe he's, like, on the other side of the airport or something. I do hope you enjoyed that flight. Uh, I certainly did. Please let me know if you have any suggestions. Give me a like. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more content. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, guys. Otherwise, you don't get alerted when I uh, push out new videos. Uh, so, yeah, that is it from me. Until the next video, guys, take care and happy flying.